Welcome back to the LCS Lounge. I am actually joined by Luger, Victorious 80 Carry, right here. Hi. We're gonna do a little VOD review first. So obviously I had to, I can only pick one play and I'm going to pick this up into the quadra kill. First of all, we're gonna start here with Poom because Poom actually gets picked off right here. Um, yeah. So as soon as this happens. I'm pushing mid. Yep. Uh, here, we can speed it up a bit. As soon as that happens, what goes through oh. the team right here? Oh, um... Like, what are you guys saying right <laughs> now? <laughs> I mean, um, there's a, like, red buff. The, there's a red buff, so I'm kind of, like, looking for a red buff, and... Uh, yeah, Poom got caught here, and... I mean, I was like, I could save him if I flash ulti. But, like, <laughs> uh, okay, maybe I need flash, you know, because uh, Azir uh, ulti, and he uh, need to save my flash. Yeah, I could save him, but, yeah. No. Well, it's actually good that you didn't, right? Because then you're gonna take red I'm here. Red. Yep, I mean, there we go. I'm happy. We're gonna speed up into this kind of Baron setup, right? Yeah. Because TL. You know they're gonna stop. Yep. Nice. And here into this setup, talk me through. So con like contracts is going in, right? So talk me through like what you guys are saying during this play. Uh, honestly, this fight is kind of hard for us if you... I mean, we, they have member uh, advantage. But I think uh, if we play slow this fight, uh, we know that we can win this fight. And also, like, I mean, I have flash. That's win for me. And uh, if Azir don't focus me... Even here, after this play, I think uh, they, they got, like, a uh, kind of poke. Mm -hmm. So I'm pushing mid right, lane right now. And... Uh, I mean, we have any up right now, so I will take as well. So, I mean, if any flash ulti someone and we can kill someone, we can play slowly here and... I'm watching Poom. Oh, no, we're oh, watching shit. you. Yeah, we're on you. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Um, I mean, how, how long Nash HP right now? Uh, like, okay. Let's see. Oh, I can go back. Yeah. I mean, we play a nice one today here. Uh, contracts looking still, and we kind of like uh, looking around. Yeah. This is actually the play because obviously you said you could have, you could have I mean, gone yeah. in I mean, we got and, and I used mean, your ult before, but yeah. then you save it for here, and it's actually really amazing that you do because this is the turnaround for the quadrant. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got Nash. We don't need fight. That's like <laughs> what we're talking in the game, and like I was like kind of quiet, like can't, can't, can't turn this. <laughs> And I, I did like a flash, and yeah, I mean. So you call for the turn? Yeah. I mean, after what Grace did. I mean, honestly, yeah, Grace kind of did. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> uh, GG. Yeah, GK, game GG. All right. Unfortunately, that's all the time I have to break down a play with you. So you're going to go over to the couch, but thank yeah, okay. you so much. Uh, yeah. Congrats What's on up, your win. Yeah. Up, Again, congrats on oh, the win. I got to go. ask. Oh, yeah. we, we almost had a handshake moment. Uh, what I, I got to ask, you guys started the year 2-0. Then weeks two and three, you couldn't pick up a win. What was the stress like coming into this week before picking up? I mean, we are kind of underdogs, I guess. Like still, I mean, we got 0-4, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Yeah, I mean, we are kind of under I think we are kind of relaxed today, so... Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Whenever we kind of, like, relax, I think we kind of, like, uh, doing something uh, right and winning game. Yeah. I mean, this game... I think we've been uh, ahead early game, I think. And we take some couple break the, with Kalista game. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, game was fine, you know? Okay, yeah, I was, I was thinking that it was a, a game that felt pretty good for you guys most of the way through. There was that little fumble there, um, but... Team Liquid is a team that's been very inconsistent. It feels like you guys are battling with them uh, in the middle of the pack trying to make playoffs. Yeah. Who do you think are like your closest competition right now for like that fourth, fifth spot? <sighs> uh, I need to look to the other team, right? Um, it's like Golden Guardians, uh, TSM, yeah. Team Liquid. Oh, uh, I mean, we got like zero four, so... <laughs> 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 I mean, I don't want to say like low steam, but I guess I need to go for low steam. But like, I like, mean, honestly, I think I, I, I mean, I mean, if we lose four game in a row, that not means to like we are bad team. I mean, yeah. just like bad time, I think, bad week. So I mean, yeah, yeah it happens. I want to ask you about what we have up on the screen over there. So you said you saw this. We did this at the top of the day when we had FBI. That is FBI's tier list. I will give you some context. We asked him which player is like 
had it hardest, and he did say you. So he was like, oh, yeah, a lot of things bad are happening around him. He's still playing well. But do you have any hot takes or first things you'd want to change about this tier list? I mean, if I, like, objectively, like, yeah. the say rank... I mean, I just told him myself, right? Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll put A, I think, for me. Yeah, yeah. okay. All right, and no, I'm going to go hot. hot I, I, mean, I don't think I can move tier, you, I mean, but I would, I'll draw an arrow saying that you would put yourself up in A. Yeah, yeah. I mean, API is not S tier for sure, right? <laughs> you can move <laughs> okay. him down to A Back as to well? A. or Wait, A or B? For FBI. Oh, here we go. I mean, he, he gave you that I compliment. I feel like he has a good team, and I mean, oh yeah, maybe I should not. <laughs> That's exactly what you want. Yeah. This is your yeah. critique. I, I will say A. Okay, back up to A. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've been thinking B. Just like a, <clears throat> um, yeah. I mean, I put myself A, and yeah, I think that's pretty fine. I mean, maybe tactical D. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Or oh, maybe this, uh, uh, I forgot the name. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Neo, uh, Neo, Neo. Oh, yeah. Neo. Oh, Neo. Neo. Yeah. Maybe D as well. Okay. You're just okay. leaving C and open? Uh, yeah. Say, stick say C, I think. He's making space. Yeah. I like this. I like yeah, this yeah. space creation. Yeah, and no one is B, I guess. B, uh, B is okay. just empty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, B is no one, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, fair. Yeah, I, if I'm talking like, uh, you know, objectively, I think it's, uh, you know, I mean, of course, like, I'm putting myself to, like, best part, you know? I'm putting myself A, so, you know? Yeah. There it is. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I know this is a little off topic, but there is something that I uh, want to go back to. Well, actually, I think Double Leaf is not S tier. Oh, oh, okay. Get yeah. in there, get in there. Put, put him down A as well. Yeah, uh, Double Leaf is not S tier. I mean, if I'm playing with the fans, I mean, I probably would say Double Leaf is S, but I don't, I don't think it's S. It's <laughs> if, you, if you're playing to the fans, <laughs> he's S. I mean, look, I think I think FPL are playing fans, by the way. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. I, mean, I don't think that was S tier. And my question is actually because you left Prince and Berserker up uh, at the top as S tier. What do you think they do consist like consistently that other AD carries don't? That puts them up mm, in that S tier. I mean, I think Berserker good player as a um, good player. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what should I say? I mean, he, Does he they just don't playing make mistakes? well. Yeah, they just don't make mistakes a yeah. lot. I mean, they playing well as a team as well, of course. And yeah. He's immediately. Pretty good. Yeah. And the new uh, Prince. Uh, I mean, Prince were not looking good in beginning, like uh, in scrims with Etestra. And I mean, I guess they winning stage. So I will say, I guess it's S tier. Yeah. Even his team says that he runs it in scrims. They had like a little uh, social yeah. piece they yeah. talked about. I mean, I think as a team they playing well in stage. Mm -hmm. I will say. I mean, they just getting stomped. Yeah. Many All right. Times in cream, so <laughs> Congratulations yeah. on the win yeah. once again. Thank uh, you. Yeah. We are out of time for this segment, though. Digverse C9 is coming up next, and we are here to welcome the newest member of the yeah. casting team. See you guys. Ooh. Congrats again. Thank you. Take it easy, brother. <laughs> Hello and welcome, everyone. If you don't know me, obviously they do. My name is Eric Deserux Anthony Beltran. I will be uh, joining us from the NACL to have a little expedition into the LCS. And of course, my tour guide here is Zale. How are you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm happy to have you here. <laughs> I gotta say, I love that all the all the Academy guys show up to cheer each other on every single time when he guys is out here casting. Yeah! We got the whole squad here from Academy here to support you. You know, Rafa was hanging out, he was chatting with you. So it's just awesome to see uh, the love that you guys have for each other, supporting each other, rising each other up. And that's what it's all about in the casting scene. Uh, but we got some really exciting games to cover here today. We got C9 versus Dig starting things off. Uh, this one definitely on paper, looking like it is gonna be a big mismatch, you know, for Dignitas, you know, down at the, the bottom of the table, still searching for their first win. Cloud9 obviously has been looking quite good, uh, but the wrinkle there is that Ignar has returned and that yes. could change things up potentially for Dignitas. That's what I'm going to be wondering right now, because uh, these first three weeks for Dignitas have been quite painful as they try and like get their identity going. Of course, this roster was built with Ignar in mind. So now that he's here, I'm wondering if this is going to be a shift from Dignitas. Can they take their season and start to turn it around? Yeah, absolutely. And, and what sort of style does Dignitas want to play with Ignar, right? Throughout the LCS thus far, we've been seeing such an incredible focus on bot lane, right? And Ignar is known much more as a guy who gets out of lane, who's a about those team fights, who's about those roams. And you can see already drawing the respect ban on that Rakan here. So C9, you know, is potentially worried about that. Uh, but the Ash ban does suggest that they, they may be considering he could play some of those marksmen and enchanters and stuff as well. Uh, not that Ignar couldn't do it, but I just feel like 
Spawn has not really been the dig toss win condition. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, even if that is traditionally the meta, should they not play more towards someone like Jensen, who has uh, traditionally been yeah. such a solid player in the LCS for so many years? Oh, yeah. And uh, a, a lot of Centaurin's early plays have been working out in the mid lane over where Jensen is. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see if this actually changes things up for the identity of Dignitas. I'm curious how things are going to come out for Cloud9, though, because, uh, you know, we you had Sven over on the podcast before talking about uh, how people kind of just paint him almost exclusively as that Enchanter player. Do yeah. you think we could see some Engage coming out now that we're on 13.3? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a lot of the melee champions have gotten buffs. I do think a lot of them are, are better as a response pick and not a blind. So we'll mm. see if Cloud9 does want to go that way. Uh, but Sven, at the end of the day, he doesn't really care i think that much what people think about him uh, he wants to play to win and they're going to play whatever they think is strongest for them in the draft on the patch and for now that's going to be lucian nami for cloud nine here and it, interestingly enough actually will be the first time they brought out the lucian nami uh, this split, so not one of the teams that had actually consistently been going towards it, but potentially thinking they could take advantage of Spawn and Dignar, try to get in head and lane, and try to really uh, get something rolling. And on the other side, it's interesting to see that Dignitas is actually looking towards very early game picks here already, Elise and Jace. So a heavy focus potentially up towards that top side, but definitely on the early game here. Uh, with this Elise, Santorin, not known for these like early game aggressive gankers. He's been much more known as that kind of control style jungler, uh, that guy's going to play different style things. And Ignar is going to get into each support. So Nautilus Elise, already a lot of early game potential here, could move around the map, try to pick on someone. And Fudge is going to have to be, I think, pretty, potentially pretty concerned about what sort of a pick he wants to go here. It might just be like a Cassante or something very defensive. And, and this syncs up so well, uh, having both the Nautilus and Elise, because it gives you so much pick potential they can really play with uh, both of them really setting each other up. Uh, we'll see how Arma plays over with that chase. But the next pick coming in for Cloud9. Uh, nothing too surprising. You know, Maokai locked in. Yeah, not too shocking uh, whatsoever. Um, but, you know, Arma did have a, a really good Jace game last week, you know, where he actually got quite a bit ahead. They weren't able to close that one out, unfortunately. But, you know, going to be interesting to see what they can get done with that and, and really, you know, where they're going to spend their bands. Because for Cloud9, uh, they can start to throw them down towards the bot lane. Obviously, that's what hasn't been drafted for Dignitas. For Dignitas, yeah. I'm curious to see, are they going to be throwing bands towards Fudge to try to potentially protect Armut, assuming that it is going to be him playing that Jace? Uh, theoretically, this could go mid. We actually saw some mid Jace last week in the LCS, but uh, Jensen traditionally not much of an, of an AD mid player, and uh, Jace has not really been something that he's gone towards a lot in his career. So I'm definitely assuming that this is top lane Jace, and that we'll see some top lane bands from Dig to try to protect that. So right now, they're instead going for the mid lane, banning away the cast and Callista bound away on the side of Cloud9. Uh, they're going to start targeting that bot lane, uh, which has been a little bit of a problem area coming out for Dignitas. So not going to allow them to have the Callista. One more ban to come out for Cloud9 before Dignitas got to start thinking about that bot lane. Yeah, so it is the Jax. Interesting. So they are actually respecting the fact that this could be a mid lane Jace. You know, I definitely wouldn't have expected that uh, from Jensen, you know, both given yeah. that we saw Armut play it last year. I'm actually going to check, you know, just even historically, how many games of Jace does Jensen even have? Uh, he does have three games in his career, and he's been playing for a very, very yes. long time. Uh, doesn't have 100% win rate on it, but <laughs> only three games played on the Jace, so... Uh, potentially, this is some info that's maybe coming from scrims, um, but I, I'm a little bit surprised to see that Cloud9 thinks that this could actually be going mid. All right, let's get that front line going for Cloud9. They got the Maokai earlier in the jungle roll. They're going to take the Scion over to Fudge in the top lane. Very, very strong engage and front line fight coming out from Cloud9's draft this far. Yeah, absolutely. And Scion's actually quite a good matchup there uh, into Jace, I think, especially with some of the top lane changes. Uh, the fact that Eclipse doesn't actually have Omni Vamp on it anymore, it's very difficult for Jace to actually trade effectively uh, with those Scion, you know, in, in some of the early mid stage. Uh, of the game. So Sion really can just withstand a lot of that early pressure. Uh, can be able to just get to a point where you become that brick wall where it's very, very difficult to actually punch through. Uh, but that's going to be the job here of Jensen on the Azir. So, you know, bringing out a lot of damage to try to deal with this front line. I'm curious to see where they're going to take Spawn's pick because I do still think you know, while they do have Jace and, and this Elise is kind of that splash of early game, you're going to need some high DPS to be able to actually get through this front line potentially. So uh, going to be the pick of the Zaya. So I think it answers it answers potential dive fairly well. You know, Maokai and Zaya are going to be going in. You're going to be looking to actually peel back yeah. uh, and try to answer that with that Zaya. Uh, <laughs> the Zaya and the Zier trying to control space. Uh, it's going to be more of the job of the Jace to play sides and actually try to actually Ooh. just play through that. This is really interesting. Yeah. 
I, I, I love this because it's Team Fight City coming out for yeah. Cloud9. I mean, if they get a lead going, they're going to be running right through Dignitas and running through them early. I love Diplex being on the Yone. Yeah, the Yone definitely very aggressive. I will say I'm a little bit surprised when you're picking it into that Zaya. You know, it kind of is designed to, to help deal with some of that dive, and they are just kind of fully committing to it, but potentially just feeling like it doesn't really matter. It's a great matchup into the Azir. Uh, this is something that we saw quite a bit last year in the LCS and abroad. Uh, where a lot of people really are enjoying this matchup. And once you get a, a few levels under your belt as that Yone, uh, you just E forward, you start trading with the Azir, and the Azir doesn't really have a lot of recourse. You can't actually take those trades. You're just kind of forced to just go back defensive, just try to shuffle away. If you spend the ult on the Yone, he just snaps back to his shadow. It's very, very easy to kind of threaten these aggressive trades constantly and chip away at that Azir. And if he gets too low, you can look for the all in with the ultimate, of course. Uh, so a lot of ways for Cloud9, I think, to play this out. Um, but at the end of the day, a lot of pressure here on Berserker and Sven, I think, to have a pretty good early stage of the game because that is really where most of the consistent damage is going to come from in this composition is Berserker. Let's see if Dignitas can turn around their season and begin it right now with that support coming in. Finally, the issues resolved. Ignar will be there and try and provide some level of engage for Dignitas as we hit the rift. Yeah, I'm so interested to see where Santorin is going to be pathing. I think a lot of this game uh, is going to be about what he can get done early on. Because if you're playing against this Lucian Nami, and I think if Ignar and Spawn are just playing far back and they're not able to actually threaten yeah. those all-ins, that 2v2 should go heavily in the favor of Cloud9. It can become very, very difficult for Dignitas' side. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to allow Fudge just to have this super free early game and just yeah. sit back and, and have no punishment. So they're actually pathing three-man top. They're going to walk... Santorin in at the same time as Ignar, potentially, and fish for a hook. All right, one place to attack. Ignar's going to spot out Fudge right here, but Ward does spot this out. Fudge is going to be A-OK -okay and will return to lane without much issue. Yeah, he will lose the ward, though, which honestly sucks. Like, you don't know now, is Elise just three camping and coming straight top? You know, am I actually vulnerable for, for some type of cheesy play like that? Blabber has to be worried about a potential invade. That is why Fudge is actually stacked up here over by the red buff in case there was a full wraparound and they were actually looking for that delayed invade. So uh, could have some knock-on effects, but, you know, not the end of the world. I'm going to try to get a little bit of a, a chunk here on Fudge as he walks the lane, but... Shouldn't honestly be too much. It's probably just a few and maybe one auto. Now, uh, what about the jungle matchup that we have here, right? You were talking about Santorin, uh, at least playing a little bit more to the team. Well, I, I've been feeling like at least a lot of the tape I've seen on Santorin this season, uh, it has been very creative early plays towards his solo lanes. Uh, should we expect him to be uh, seeing that same type of momentum coming out from Santorin? Yeah, I think when you're playing the Elise, you have to, right? You know, wh whether or not it's your playstyle as a player, this is not a farm and wait around style champ. This is yeah. gank, 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 gank. If the ganks work, you keep ganking. If the ganks don't work, you keep ganking, right? Like that is Elise. You really don't have uh, much recourse besides that. Uh, I don't think that he has to necessarily only go towards the solo lanes. I think they can look to attack bot and try yeah. to utilize Ignar here, who's going to get a nice little trade down. I mean, that's the thing, though. Uh, this bot lane has been uh, a little bit rough for Dignitas, so... Uh, it it kind of begs that question of, should you still be focusing down here? I mean, Ignar is that big change, so you do have someone to give you some sort of uh, engage to set up the picks down here into the bottom lane. Centaurin is spotted out by awards, so Cloud9 will be savvy to some of his positioning. Yeah, absolutely. They knew that he's starting on that bot side, so they have full information on that. They know that he's going to be clearing towards top, which definitely suggests uh, that Fudge may have to be a little bit careful. And then it's just about trying to trim this wave as much as possible. You know, Fudge, you're going to be worried about them diving on this stacked wave ahead. that is actually coming right now. Uh, so yeah. Arma has done a good job actually setting this wave up right as this crashes. They want to try to pull off that dive, and hopefully for them, before Fudge actually hits three, a fudge has got to try to stay this safe as, as much as he can. I think he's going to have to leave. Yeah, coming in for the dive right now. Leading it's going to be Santorin. Has the repel to uh, set up the tower dive with relative ease, and we get first blood coming out for Dignitas. Nicely done by Dig. Clean dive there. They stack the wave. They do get in, but this is one of the benefits of playing Scion. He, he got almost the entire wave there. He's going to miss, you know, one or two range minions, maybe, uh, but maybe not even. So got basically all the XP, got most of the gold, of course, you never want to be dying under the tower like that. It still sucks, but uh, he is going to be in a much better position than, than most other tanks would be. And now, really, all he has to be able to do is actually survive uh, until he can hit six, and you can use that ultimate as kind of that pseudo teleport. Um, but this is that difficulty. You know, when you are playing Cyan, if you get that early dive, sometimes the Jace can really snowball the game. We see early serrated Dirk. Yeah. Uh, it's going to give Armut a lot of power for now. In the mid lane, 
An attack coming out from Blabber, going after his old teammate in Jensen. Uh, will not go for the gank right there. Instead, we're going to get a repay gank coming out from Santorin. Realizes the flash is down for Fudge, so let's make it happen again. Fudge, you're going the wrong way, buddy. Sorry. There's no other express route to the respawn than death itself. Our Mutt will grab that kill. Yeah, and Fudge, Fudge is actually just trying to fix the wave because he realizes the wave get hard frozen on him. So they're going to burst down that zombie, though. But meanwhile, bot lane. Ooh, going on to spawn. Spawn taking a lot of damage. Flashes away to safety. Ignar trying for an engage, but couldn't win out for the Dignitas bot lane. I love this for Dignitas. That is, that is huge overall. Fudge is going to be in such a tough spot now. You know, when he realized, okay, Elise is behind me. There's nothing I can do to actually survive, so he wanted to try to fix the wave, get as much experience as possible. Looks like Armand, though, decided not to freeze, so he is hard shoving. So the experience will be gained by Fudge, but both of these kills being grabbed there early on, and both of them going yeah. to the Jace, not the Elise, is actually such a big deal. Uh, so this is going to put Armand miles ahead up in that top lane, and Fudge uh, potentially might not be able to stabilize in what can become a very, very difficult matchup when you're that far behind. And it feels good for Dignitas. They're getting themselves a lead very early on. This has been standard to a lot of their play, though. They they do make early plays, but it's the follow-up that I'm looking for, and it's the bot lane survival that I want to see. I know so you have eyes on the solo lanes right now, Zayn. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mid lane is looking pretty good here for Jensen, right? You know, he is kind of just winning in isolation as far as the farm goes. Top lane, obviously, heavily skewed uh, by the ganks there from from Santorin, has put Armut way ahead, uh, which is a very big deal, but. You know, bot lane is going to be that problem for Dignitas, right? So it's kind of the, the tale of two lanes here. Mm -hmm. It's about the solos getting those leads for Dig, uh, but it is about that 2v2 falling behind. You know, Blabber has just been comfortably yeah. farming away, so he's established a small farm advantage, and we'll see what he can get done with that. Uh, because for him, you know, his job is mostly to just try to answer the ganks, you know, try to protect his lanes, uh, especially now that his bot lane is ahead, to try to keep them ahead, to try to keep extending that advantage so that Berserker and Zven can play aggressively and try to punish spawn. Hanging out over towards this Dragon Pit right now. Santorin's not too far off. Blabber holds a lot of control, especially once he hits level six. Once you start contesting for that Drake, that Maokai ultimate is oh so valuable. Control ward going to be placed down. Blabber starting up the Drake has Deplex alongside him, as well as priority from the bot lane of Cloudrun. Yeah, it should be able to do that, no problem. Not really much of a chance of a contest there. Uh, spawn really on the back foot here, you know, down at least two full waves. Even after he collects this, he should be down about those two full waves. Uh, so Blabber, gonna be able to grab that dragon. Gotta hit it one more time. Hey, gets it. Clean, secure there. Easy enough, easy enough for <laughs> Blabber. Uh, something coming out for Cloud9. It seems like Cloud9 strength is coming out from this bottom side. And Blabber now going to play for that a little bit more. He's pinging out to uh, potentially set up something for this bot lane. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's, he's playing down on that bottom side, but you can see on the top side, you know, Dignitas is playing around their vision up on that top side of the map. They want to keep their Jace safe. They want to keep their Jace aggressive. Yeah. Uh, and Santorin is invading. He's going to be taking these camps away. So all the time spent on that bot side from Blabber uh, is going to have a cost up on the top side. And Diplex, you know, despite having this counter pick here, has not really had the best time in this lane. It's actually Jensen who has got the run of things. He's up almost 20 CS, and that will even out a little bit here. Uh, but Diplex is kind of struggling, to be honest, in that 1v1, which uh, could be pretty problematic for Cloud9. Yeah, so far, a lot of uh, investment banking coming out of Dignitas, really trying to make sure that Armand's gonna uh, Armand's gonna be okay up there in the top side. But ultimate coming out from Fudge wants to challenge 200 health remains in Armand, but Santorin has arrived and wants to bring some backup for his top laner. Spider looking to sink the fangs into Fudge, but the flash will be burnt for safety. Yeah, and, and Fudge may have to actually back off. Uh, we'll see if they can pull off this dive on the bot side though. Blabber's going. Right, ultimate coming out from Blabber, Berserker, and Sven uh, rotating around the bot of Dignitas. Caught out by the bubble and down spawn will go. Perfect juggling of the turret aggro Sven. Okay, no one gonna fall for Cloud9. Yeah, not gonna look for the redive. They all oh, the hook! Oh, coming in from Ignar! Who will decimate Sven and get something back for Dig? <laughs> not often you see the support get a kill there in the 1v2. Sven just slightly too far forward. A great hook. They are coming out from, from Ignar. Let's go. Pulls him back under the turret, gets himself a kill. It is only the kill going to the support, but still, Ignar is doing great on the top side, so I think they're gonna be pretty happy about how this went, all things told, but. Lucky, honestly, for 
Arma that Centaur was there to cover him again, because that would have been a solo kill from the Scion, you know, behind or not. Yeah. I think Fudge had him there, so we can see this one more time. Flabber wants to pull aggro, and then he's basically just holding the W here as long as possible so he can use that as a turret reset. And then as soon as they're about to get that kill, he uses the Twisted Advance, gets that tower aggro reset, they back off. You can see they're considering, do we want to redive? Do we not want to redive? But as soon as that last minion goes <laughs> down, he was still just that little bit too far forward. Ignar catches him with the tip of that hook, the ulti there to follow. And a clean kill for himself is really nicely done. Hey, it's a new look for Dignitas' bot lane when they have... Uh, uh, my mind went blank. Ignar down there for a moment. And, uh, I mean, it, it, it was a great engage. It got something back for Dignitas. And uh, it, it's a whole new look coming out for them so far. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's not going to be an enchanter down there. It's not that AD. And I will draw your eyes to the inventory here. It's actually the Moby Boots. Uh, from Ignar. So if that doesn't tell you what he wants to do, oh, yeah. I don't know what will. He wants to get active Traveling. on the map here. He wants to be moving around uh, with Santorin. But you can see the struggles that are kind of being had here for Diplex in that mid lane. You know, he uses that E. He's really looking to trade aggressively every single time that Soul Unbound is available. But Jensen is just spacing him out very, very well. So even when he's going far forward, he's not really getting the greatest trades on a Jensen. And he's forcing him to actually retreat back with that Soul Unbound earlier than he would like. Um, but Jensen could potentially be in some trouble. Ignar is here, though, uh, for the coverage. blabber has been trying to set up over here for a while now and still <laughs> will not come up with anything. A little bit of BM coming out from Jensen. Yeah, flashes the, the question mark there to his old jungler. You gotta love the banter back and forth between those players. I know nice. your gameplay. Oh. oh, that looked weird. He, like, straight bounced off that wall. Yeah, that was a little bit of Tokyo Drift coming out from Fudge. Yeah, it looked for a second like he was going to potentially go for an all-in again, but now Blabber's oh, in some trouble. Oh, Ultimate comes out, Centaurin does not care. Getting caught out is going to be Jensen. Deplex going hard on to him. Blabber critically low. Santorin with the chase. 100 health remains. Junglers and mid laners dueling it out. Santorin will get the better, though, with one more fang sunk into Blabber. Now Deplex shows up, wants to clean up the kill, but Armut is there, and Armut has been invested into. So Deplex will give that respect. Yeah, not going to be able to finish him off. Diplex can't actually get the kill mid, and he collapses too late to save his jungler or get the kill on a Santorin in the jungle. So things not going the way that Cloud9 was hoping. They do still have a huge lead down in bot lane, but the rest of the map is getting a little bit out of control. I can see the Eclipse already done very, very early here for Armut. Uh, Fudge did go towards the Frozen Heart, which is great in that 1v1, but when magic damage gets involved, it's going to be tough. And Blabber here, you know, posturing aggressively wants to actually take away this Scuttle, but there's no shot in the 1v1 for him. He uses the ultimate to try to peel, and he uses the Bramble Snash, and then just flashes out. But the Flash is there to follow with the Repel for Santorin, and, and he can kind of keep that chase going. Jensen forced the Flash defensively here, and then Diplex just charges up the Q, tries to come back over the wall to save Blabber, who had been doing a really good job actually kiting it out. Uh, the Q knockup does hit, but he doesn't have enough damage to finish, and with Armut coming down, Diplex knows he would just be giving away a kill. And now again, three men top, and sure, Fudge has armor, but he's got no MR and no HP. No shot he can stay under that tower. Just got to walk away. This is great for Dignitas. It's a great early game coming out for Dignitas. Uh, the strongest early game they've had, uh, at least recently, was against Immortals. You know, unfortunately, it went by the wayside. Now they got to hold on to this one and make sure they can keep that stranglehold. Uh, really locked onto Cloud9, and they're doing a good job of it so far as they try and set up for a tower dive onto uh, Fudge. Fudge taking a lot of damage. We'll get knocked back from that decimating smash, and another turret will go down. How do we follow in through as Cloud9 say goodbye to the inner top? Yeah, gonna be able to get both towers off that end the flash off of Fudge. He wanted to stick around, and Cloud9 were moving members up to try to cover Diplex as well as Zven. We're heading up there, but uh, just too little too late. They were much too slow to actually get there to cover the potential dive. So they lose everything, and you just start to really not care about what Berserker has gotten down on, on, done on the other side because it's just not close to as much as what Dig has gotten done on that top side. So now we've got to see, can they continue to push the game forward here? Uh, the one advantage Cloud9 has is, is that they have been stacking these dragons, uh, but Dignitas you know, needs to keep moving around the map, keep knocking down turrets, and just moving this pressure forward. Keep Santorin active on the map because he has been doing an excellent job. And, and Dignitas have a great comp to keep this going on. Uh, we were highlighting before both this uh, Elise and Nautilus, but just that pick, it, it really does kind of uh, compound on itself. You, you set up the hook, it does put the uh, cocoon to follow through. Same thing, vice versa. So as long as Santorin and Ignar keep matching up and keep roaming from lane to lane to lane, it's going to be a disaster for Cloud9. That's yeah, going to be very difficult to deal with. You know, they need to try to find a little bit of stability. 
and try to find windows where Berserker can really kind of use his influence on the map. Because uh, if you look at Lucian Nami, you know, they have their Mythics complete, and that is the really big power spike. You know, they're much stronger than that bot lane duo. So if you can find uh, 2v2s or even potential 3v3s, that would be massive. And that is why Cloud9 is looking to group around them. Fudge moving up towards mid lane, looking to kind of get ready uh, for any potential scrap that could be there. Blabber is there as well, so they're going to move this up and try to reclaim some vision down on this bottom side. Yeah, moving out to the bottom side right now, not too far off on the flank is Duplex, but nothing to uh, fight over. So it's just control, control, control coming out for Cloud9 thus far. They'll rotate that control over to this top side where Rift Herald will be spawning quite soon. Dignitas might look for some poke as a response. Yeah, they're going to be trying to poke, you know, slowly chunk them down a little bit there with Armut and then use the rest of their Ooh. tools to engage. And they found Blabber now. Knockup coming on to Blabber. Blabber taking a chunk of health, but the bubble is there. But the hook brings Blabber right back to the fight. Spawn with the ultimate will tear down Blabber. And Dignitas, they're going to take another pick. Oh, Jensen, though. Oh, Jensen gets away from the calling in time. Not going to continue with the dive. It's going to be Cloud9. Dignitas, they're having their way with this map. Yeah, Dignitas looking really, really good, utilizing the engage that they've drafted, trying to get aggressive here. They do get that kill, but there's some oh, lower health uh, bars on Dignitas' side, and they want to try to fight for this. They're going to push up. Fudge might go in. He has his ultimate. Teleport is coming out. Fudge in the middle of four. Gets blocked out from his escape on the ultimate. But there is Jensen. Emperor's divide to try and escape. Berserker cannot chase him down. And Fudge is the one in trouble. Decimating Smash to get one knockup. And Cloud9 find the retreat. Yeah, they are going to be able to get out of there. But at the end of the day, the Herald was actually claimed by Santora. And so Dignitas still coming out ahead there. And Berserker fully committing everything to try to actually burst down Jensen. They had a great bubble from Sven onto Jensen as he TP'd in. The Flash, the Ignite, the Gale Force, everything used from Berserker to try to burst him down, but couldn't quite get that kill. And that's two times in a row. And Jensen able to get out of there with just a little bit of HP. So Cloud9, you know, desperately trying to hang on, trying to utilize their one power point on the map. But feels like they're going to need some more time. They're going to need some more items potentially here on Fudge on Blabber so they can get a little bit more tanky and, and buy a bit more space for Berserker and hopefully for Diplex, he can use that time to actually be farming up in a side lane because he didn't actually join there. So he was just kind of farming that side and has at least caught up in farm with Jensen and completed his mythic. So uh, we'll start to become a, a pretty big threat as this game goes on. Now, uh, walking over towards this Drake, I mean, it's a minute 20 before it does come down. Uh, and it's going to be an early setup coming out for Cloud9. Uh, during the setup, uh, it, it would be nice to see Dignitas go for a little bit more right here because they do have that pick they can work with. Uh, get some early vision into that river. You still have Jensen over towards this bottom side. It looks like Cloud9 will hold control of the river for now. Yeah, Cloud9 trying to play around these dragons. Maokai really strong in these areas. Uh, just throw those saplings out. He is playing Demonic Embrace, so has a little bit of AP behind him. Uh, they want to continue stacking dragons. You know, that's their main advantage. Fudge is just trying to play Bodyguard here on the side, but it's taking quite a bit of damage that Sven will have to heal it up. Battle line strong right here. Cloud9 looking to turn this game around. But Dignitas have been in the driver's seat for the most part. Diplex waiting for the team fight to go through. Caught out by the cocoon. Pulled back in his blabber. Tidal wave comes in too late because Fudge is down. Now Berserker able to get one right back onto Ignar. With that one for one trade, Fudge for Ignar and Cloud9 still hold control of the river. Yeah, they hold control of the river, but they've lost control of mid lane. Sure, you cleared out the wave, but there's still the Herald there, and this charge uh, could be very problematic for them. That tower is incredibly low. They're desperately trying to clear out this mid lane wave so that they can actually move towards that dragon, but they can't really do it just yet. Ooh. They're going to lose mid. Now losing mid, Jensen chasing through. Emperor's Divide does not catch out. Another flash comes out in time. Blabber looking to throw the flank. Fudge. Retaliation from Cloud9. And here comes Fudge taking right on in. Spawn low, Spawn goes down and Sven flashes away. Armand on the retreat. And Cloud9 have something to say about this early lead. They will take it and smash it away from Dignitas. Uh, Cloud9 gets so much back there. The early trade, you know, was top lane for support, which is in the favor of Dignitas, but the problem is top laners can TP, supports don't have it here in this game, so Fudge respawns, he TPs right back in, has a great flank ward, and they're able to get so much with that. Dignitas pushing past that mid-tier one, not tracking the fact that Fudge could actually TP back into that fight, really, really punished them. You know, they were trying to actually segment and conquer Cloud9's, you know, two different groups, uh, but they get wrapped around on, they get completely wiped out.
And this is kind of where things start going wrong. And this is this is much earlier, I guess, in that fight. Uh, when Fudge actually does get caught out, he gets cocooned. There's a hex flash into the hook. Really nice initial engage there. And they do get the skill down, but then Igmar wrapped up here by Blabber's ulti. They burst him down. And then as we're gonna fast forward, I assume, through this, you know, this first turret is taken, and this is kind of that, that problem. They lose track of the fact that there's wards behind them. There's a pink ward here. A ward actually gets dropped as well in mid lane. You can see the pink ward get dropped immediately there, and they push past this line. Ignar is actually still way back in base. Ding Toss are so far up. Berserker not able to actually be burst down there by spawn. It looked like the Feather Call was potentially used a little bit too early. Couldn't actually connect there onto Berserker as he looked for the R Flash and then the Feather Caller, but uh, didn't actually find it. And Zvet <laughs> having a bit of a laugh, you know, knows that's not a, a position that they should actually be winning from. But now Dignitas has lost their advantage and Armut's in a lot of trouble with no flash. Oh, in a world of hurt right now with two Cloud9 solo laners on top of them. A shutdown delivered right over to Fudge. And Cloud9 have taken this, con uh, taken control of this game right on back. Yeah, they're right back in the driver's seat here. This great early game from Dignitas has unfortunately for them been kind of thrown away. They are still up to a 2K gold lead, but it's soul point for Cloud9. You know, their carries are really stabilizing. Berserker is massively ahead of the spawn. And Diplex is gonna become a very, very serious threat at this point in the game. He gets solo gold on that top tier one. He's 2-0-2, uh, has quite a bit of gold in pocket to spend as well. So uh, gonna be working on that second item when he hits it. Uh, Yone will be well and truly online. Yeah, nice knock to clean up the budge, but how disheartening right now for Dignitas. They're still yeah. looking for their first win on the regular season of Zale. And even when they got a 3K gold lead in this early game, it's all starting to slip by. Yeah, absolutely. And that is the difficulty, right? You know, they got great leads up on the top side, but Spawn was falling so far behind Berserker. And in this yeah. meta, it's so much about playing around your bot lane, about really facilitating those AD carries. And Cloud9, you could see at all times, really knew that. Even though Fudge was very far behind in the 1v1, he's not trying to play to actually get more farm or experience for himself. He's just moving mid and saying, it doesn't actually matter if I lose the 1v1 because I'm going to be here to enable Berserker to put him in a position to really succeed. And that's going to be the difference for them. And Dignitas, I think, just got sloppy, you know, for one moment there. Lost track of the fact that Fudge could be TPing back in on spawn. And Cloud9 is going to punish you for that. All right, Cloud9 into the mid lane. Looking to take a tower. Sven right there. Zoning out with the bubble. This is property. It belongs to us. But for Dignitas, holding steady for the time being. I, I just keep looking at where Fudge is on the map. Always so deep into the jungle of Dignitas currently. Blabber looking for the engage. Here comes Berserker. Calling goes out. Spawn so oh, he tore it apart once again. He doesn't get to play League of Legends. And neither do the rest of Dignitas as they're chased away from the river. And uh, chased away from the team fight outright. Chased away from the Baron. Cloud9 will start it up. Yeah, they're gonna start it up. And Dick, they have to contest. They know this game is getting out of control. Look at that shock blast. Half Ooh. of the HP off Sven. And Jensen is here with ulti. They could make something happen. Yeah. Armand still has a lot of fight. Ready to bring. Jensen on the other end. Wants to wail away. Back up. Ooh, it is so bad right now. As Berserker will take another. And Cloud9 will take the Red Bull Baron. Yeah, about five minutes. Puts Cloud9 from 3k behind to 2k ahead. That is an enormous swing here over these last few plays. And Cloud9 will even have the Baron buff here for what is going to be Soul coming up in just a minute. Jensen trying to at least get the scuttle back, trying to get some vision around here. Uh, but we can see again, you know, Spawn just kind of pushing a little bit far forward here. Cloud9 coming from multiple angles. Blabber, great job actually escaping here. Gets the ulti down, Twisted Advance in onto Spawn. He uses the Gale Force to get back. But Berserker is there. Berserker is ready. Pounces right on him. Spawn is just gone in the hurry. And then it's a full on retreat here for Dignitas. Yeah. Cloud9, no hesitation, right in onto the bear. And they know that they can actually force this. And as, as we're back to live, it's 30 seconds until Dragon. They're taking over uh, this bot side jungle, which is going to become very, very difficult. You know, if they lose full control of that area, they're not going to have any way to approach this soul and try to contest it. Uh, and and, and Azale, it. it it felt like there was hope for Dignitas into this one. So blundered it has been. Cloud9 just surrounding this mid and bot lane at the moment. Uh, they've been able to enable their bottom lane, get Berserker running around the map, and 
even with Fudge, you were talking about it, how well things went for Dignitas up there. Fudge doesn't care, he's a Scion. He's a big tanky boy, he yeah. can take care of himself and he can take care of Berserker as well. Exactly, I mean, even if you're behind, it matters so much less than your AD being behind. Individually, it's now a 3,500 gold lead for Berserker over Spawn, and that is just so problematic. Yeah. You know, he's likely gonna have the IE, his third item completed before Spawn actually gets his quick plays as his second item. So uh, that is just incredibly difficult for them to actually deal with. And it puts so much of an onus onto Jensen and Armut to really be making things happen in these game fights because they're the ones that are only going to be able to get that damage done. And Bat is going to go to worse here now with the Cloud Soul picked up. Uh, that can be even more difficult to actually get away from Berserker with all that additional move speed. Uh, the ulti move speed coming out with your calling as well makes it so simple to actually chase people down if they're overextended whatsoever. How much more did Dignitas really have left here? The uh, the investments they did make into both Jensen and Arma, you, you, you do see moments of where uh, it, it does look good for them. That poke during the Baron fight. Arma does bring damage, so does Jensen. But these win conditions are waning and they're waning incredibly fast right now. Yeah, it's definitely difficult. I mean, I think, I think their hope now is to try to you know, overload one side of the map, try to find a pick, you know, find a yeah. 2v, a 2v1, a 3v2, that type of play, uh, and utilize Jensen or Armut plus one to try to kill off, you know, a C9 soul lane or something like that. Uh, but Cloud9 is, is really kind of checking all the boxes. They're putting vision behind them. They're making sure that they're staying, you know, in a similar area. They have four members here on that top lane. Oh. Budge is pushing in through bot, and they're just going to use the Maokai ult to create space here, push Jensen back, and take this tower. That tower taken in the top lane. Cloud9 able to claim it for themselves. They'll get an inhibitor on top of it while Fudge pushes into the mid lane. All these waves crashing in, and the only response for Dignitas is to continue the split push with Armand. Yeah, it's kind of a flashback to that previous Jace game where Armand was very far ahead. Now, this TP seems a little bit too late. Uh, the tower, tower will go down, but he is very far up, and they could actually look for a collapse. You can see on the map, Cloud9 is coming. They're sending all their oh. members over here looking to try oh, no. to corral Armand. Oh, poor Armand. No, you're far from home, Fell. Oh, God. Oh, God. And it's two beefy boys on top of that. The tankiest members of Cloud9 putting a bouncy house in the bottom lane. Mutt goes down and Cloud9 claim another. Yeah, going to be able to grab another kill there. Armut was, I want to say, one auto off from killing that tower before the TP completed. Yeah. Uh, and then he would have been completely fine. But now it's Diplex trying to get revenge for that oh, laning phase. He wants Jensen, but Jensen... We'll be able to use the Emperor's Divide and stay safe. Use the passive over on this top lane. The passive not going to be utilized, at least for holding some uh, semblance of wave control out for Cloud9. Shouldn't be up much longer. Yeah, not going to be there for too long. Nice little attempt from Diplex. It is just the trade of the ulties there. And at the very least, Jensen able to maintain control you know, of his blue buff, going to be able to grab that for himself. Um, they're just kind of in this holding pattern where they're, they're trying to sit back. They're not going to come out of their base until there's a major objective to fight for. I don't know if they're going to try to contest Baron or not. Um, to me, I think I would probably just be looking to Turtle and maybe come out for Elder. Hopefully you can have these next couple minutes to get some more items under your belt and hope that you can really find that perfect engage where you can look to burst someone down because they do have some playmaking. Uh, they have the potential if you can catch someone out like Berserker and kill them off very early, maybe you can make it happen. Here we come down the mid lane. Here is Fudge Express Delivery. Got it for Valentine's Day. I know you love your chocolates. Now here comes the ultimate. We'll follow through. Be the next present from Blabber. In the top side, Diplex fighting out with Armut. Wants to take the 1v1. But doesn't even need to take it. Cloud9 just want to take the base at this point. Yeah, I mean, Jensen TP's into the fan, but he had to flash out, and now Santorin's in trouble. Oh, uh, the flash from Santorin keeps him alive. Cocoon lands onto nothing. Teleport coming through from Diplex, coming right off of the respawn, and another inhibitor is forfeit for Dignitas. Yeah, Berserker, every single time the rapid fire is ready, watch how he steps forward. He gets that E up from Zven, steps forward, looks for a chunk, and he's just constantly poking away at spawn, at Jensen, at Santorin, on these squishy members. I don't have easy ways to actually heal it back up. You know, making it very, very difficult for them to ever exit their base. And now, with the Baron spawning here in 15, Cloud Niners pulling back, clearing out all the vision. That's the only ward that was out there on the map whatsoever, that one blue trinket. Uh -oh. And you look at the mini map, there's nothing. There's literally no vision on this entire section of the map here for Dig. So they're not even going to try. They're just going to seed the Baron kind of as I expected and uh -oh. probably try to get some vision around that Elder. <laughs> it looks going hard onto Jensen. Chases him back into his base. They don't need the full five for this Baron right now. That's how strong Cloud9 are. Even with a 3k lead, so much control coming out. Now Fudge 
Got out topside, has to fight it out with Ignar and Santorin, but again, this is a very, very tanky Scion, and Elise isn't going to bring enough to this battle as the Baron is taken. Now they'll call over our mutt, but the rest of Cloud9 have arrived, and they're ready for a fight, baby. Tidal Wave going through. Ignar getting chased by Berserker, who will tear away with the <laughs> calling and become unstoppable. Now our mutt will fight through with Fudge, but Fudge brought more friends to the fight, so Fudge is going to win double kill for Berserker. That's yeah, never a fair fight in League of Legends. Calling the squad <laughs> up there. Fudge survives, and it's insult to injury as Cloud9 don't even lose the Scion and what was that eventual 1v3. They kill the Baron, they use the Baron recalls, they get back there, they get additional kills, and now they're pushing in here to look to close out the game. Coming for the end is going to be Cloud9. Dignitas, they won't have Armut. It'll be a four versus five. They want to make a defense, but no, they're definitely not going to make that one with momentum this huge coming out from Cloud9. They're going for the glows right now. They'll take down Jensen. Blabber goes on a killing spree. Final inhibitor falls. Next is the Nexus Towers. That yeah, Cloud9 going to be able to close this one out, looking to move to their fifth win here. Dignitas will remain winless. Now the closing moments, one more Nexus Tower separating this victory. Berserker dancing around the feathers. Victorious EP tidal wave, only to signal the victory of Cloud9, improving to five in two on the season. Nicely played by Cloud9. I think they're, they're gonna have some review to do in the early game, but gotta be really happy with how they were able to turn that around. Uh, really punishing the overextension by Dignitas in mid lane. You know, Dig had a really, really strong early couple minutes on the top half of the map. Uh, but the problem was Cloud9 was winning so heavily in that bot lane 2v2 that Berserker was always kind of a win con for them. And it really only took the one misstep from Dig. You know, they over push in mid, they're playing around that third dragon, but they drop Herald, they go past that mid tier one, Fudge respawns, TP's back in, and all of a sudden Cloud9 are wiping the map with them and turning the game on its head. Yeah, that's that problem point that Dignitas have been trying to solve and trying to figure out. And Cloud9 will be the team to punch through and exploit it. Another good win coming out for Cloud9, being able to be victorious after falling behind in that early game. It is nice at least to see, you know, Ignar finally back with the team here. Dignitas yeah. obviously having a rough split, you know, wasn't able to get Ignar with them until just now, you know, seven games in is the first game. So uh, they're going to need some time, I'm sure, to actually scrim together to try to really get on the same page. But at least it's interesting to see that they want to play a little bit of a different style. You know, Ignar bringing out uh, the engaged support here with the Nautilus, going for the early Moby Boots, you know, trying to get a bit out on the map, trying to get active. Uh, didn't work out for them here, but at least it's it's a bit of a different look. You know, Sandhorn yeah. had a really great early game on this lease. You know, Armud was was really kind of the, the beneficiary of that pressure. And Jensen showcased that he still has really, really strong lane. You know, his, his lane was heavily in his favor in the 1v1 against Diplex. So uh, there were definitely war positives for Dignitas, but uh, they've got to find a consistent win condition. And, and that is the difficulty. You know, you're bringing in this, this rookie AD in spawn, uh, and he, I think, is having some trouble finding his footing in, in the league thus far. And the reality is, you know, most of these games do feel decided by bot lanes these days. You know, it's so much about, you know, who has this superstar AD that's yeah. going to be able to close out the game. You know, when you look at the teams at the top of the table, you're looking at Berserker and Prince and Doublelift and mm -hmm. FBI and guys like this um, who are able to kind of take over games if you give them that small lead. And Dignitas have, have got to find something uh, to really kind of go with it as their yeah. as their main win condition. I mean, I mean that's been the hard part for Spawn, right? He's uh he's a he's a very gifted marksman. It's just been a rough season for him. He's more talented when it comes to the team fight and playing around that. Um, with the focus being so heavily into the bottom lane, it does put that extra pressure, which is so hard when you're a rookie when you're just coming into the split, uh, you know, trying to make your name and uh, earn your right to be there. Yeah, absolutely, and especially this split because there's actually so many talented ads in yeah. the league right now uh, that it is honestly a really tough time uh, to actually come in and then have to lane against some of these guys uh, the fact as well that you know obviously supports are going to be changing back and forth for him so hopefully for dignitas uh, they're going to be able to get their feet under him and, and pick up a first win soon all right well good win for cloud nine we're joining Whippo and fudge on stage for our verizon post game interview yeah, let's go. hello fudge how are you doing after that game I felt like the boss in that game. Uh, 
Well, I'm just dying, and I'm like, it's fine. Good death, good death. We just play football lane. Dragon, dragon, don't fight. Was there a point there. where you were concerned about the game state? I feel like when you're playing tanks like this in the game, it can be a little bit concerning when yeah. they get a little too fed. Yeah, sometimes so I felt like Jace did get a little bit too fed. I didn't have to mm -hmm. die the second time, I think. Or I could have played a little bit better, mm -hmm. for sure, to not die twice. But I do think um, it's sort of natural that they're going to be able to dive me level three in this game. I don't think sure. there's too much counterplay towards it. And, he did get really, really far ahead, and I was a little bit worried, but his tier stacking was really, really slow this game because he bought Dirk mm -hmm. early game. So he's actually not that strong with poke in mid game until like three items. And by that time, we had already won a couple team fights. And as soon as we like forced them on Soul Point uh, at four dragons, we sort of just win the game, I feel like. And uh, comp was really, really good. I agree with you. Um, I saw you took the Comet, not something that people have been taking recently. Is that mm -hmm. an ego thing from scrims? Have you been uh, winning that lane a little bit too much in scrims, or uh, uh, is it something you prefer? I don't really. I don't think I played this lane in scrims, okay. but um, I thought that if I didn't get Dove level three, I can still trade it like level five or so with mm -hmm. Comet. Uh, I think the normal choice would probably be like Spellbook in this matchup is the is the normal choice, which might have just been better, honestly. <laughs> it probably wasn't the best Comet game, but. Um, I was just trying it out, you know, testing stuff on stage, just seeing how it goes. Once you fell behind, did you feel the need to make proactive plays? Or what, after that TP mid where you guys really turned around the game, uh, were you proactively trying to make plays still? Or are you the type of team where if your top lane tank falls behind, your main engage basically mm -hmm. falls behind, do, do you uh, end up being silent? Mm -hmm. Or do you make proactive calls and try to make picks? No, I was, I was still communicating really well, I, okay. I feel, with my team. And um, the main game plan was really just fighting dragons. and. Um, there was a little bit of a miscommunication at Second Herald where Blabber tried to fight and uh, Diplex didn't really want to. Um, <laughs> classic. But <laughs> very classic. But um, we felt like the game plan was really simple. We just have to sit in Dragon uh, because we usually win mid 3-3 because Lucianami was actually really far ahead this game. And just sit in Dragon, Maokai presses E, I tank all the Jace EQs, I tank the Elise Ws, mm -hmm. and if they engage on me, we should win the fight afterwards with Maokai okay. Ultimate. So I felt like the game was really, really straightforward and based on composition, so I, uh, I, was, I was pretty sm it was smooth sailing, I, I feel, throughout the game. Okay, uh, I respect that, I agree <laughs> with you. I, I do think you guys' draft looked really good. Mm -hmm. Talking about draft for C9, you guys are 5-2. and two. Uh, How do you feel coming into Super Week, winning game one, a uh, new patch? You guys had a great draft today. Are you confident that you're going to be able to outdraft the next two opponents as well? I'm pretty confident, although today they did lose one ban, and I was like, Mithy, if you don't win draft today, you're, <laughs> like, you're out, bro. Like, <laughs> but uh, I'm pretty confident with our drafts right now. I think we have pretty good read on the meta, uh, despite the new patch. And we sort of, I feel, can play more, other, more champions than other uh, teams in general. Okay. I do think the game against TL will probably be the hardest. Um, although they did lose today the CLG, I, I do think uh, they're still a pretty strong team. So playing against Summit is also a bit of an ego battle. So and we're going to have to see how that one goes. How are you going to approach that? Uh, I mean, maybe I'm asking too much here, but how do you approach playing against ego players like you've coined? Um, I play against them normally, but I do, I do think Blabber has a tendency to like to gank Summit. <laughs> I, I think he's a little bit butthurt about Summit dying in playoffs a lot, so he's like ganking top lane whenever he can, and he's like skipping every camp he can to come top lane, so Summit oh, has to worry about that one. Fudge trying to put the fear of God in Summit <laughs> in this interview. It's some nine games, it's some nine games. Hey, I see what it is. Thank you very much for joining me, Fudge. I appreciate your insight as always, and uh, we're going to have to toss it over to the break for GG versus TSM. Okay, it's not so bad, like, it's pretty good, to be honest. Yeah. Good. I mean, nice, oh, nice. Whoa. Oh my god, Igna. Blabber looking to throw the flight. Retaliation from Cloud9, and here comes Fudge, taking right on in. Spawn low, Spawn goes down, and Sven flashes away. Armand on the retreat, and Cloud9 have something to say about this early lead. They will take it and smash it away from Dignitas. We have to tell everyone that we just switched to Verizon's new Welcome Unlimited plan for just $30. I've already told everyone. Wait, did you say Verizon for just $30? It's their best unlimited price ever. $30? That's awesome. Yeah, and it's from the most reliable 5G network in America. For $30 a line, I'm switching now. Yeah, it's easy. And you get $960 when you switch the whole family. Oh, wow, I gotta let my buddies know. We're already here. The network you want, the price you love, only from Verizon.